Time once again for the Rural Intelligence Report. And if you're listening to this on Sunday, we hope you fell back and turned your clocks back one hour. (laughs) If not, your day is ruined. But we uh, (laughs) will lighten it up even if you did not fall back because it's time for the Rural Intelligence Report with Mark Williams, ruralintelligence.com. Mark, nice to speak to you today. Good morning to you, and yeah, it's lovely to be here. Hopefully, we're on time, and uh, <laughs> so that will be good. Yes, and we've got—it's um, a fun week, actually. It's a fun week this week. Before we got on the air, I was talking. We were talking. Uh, we literally cover the width and breadth of uh, the area, and we'll start off in Washington, Connecticut, on November the eighth at six thirty in the evening. Yeah, you know, the the people who arrange things at the Gunn Memorial Library do a great job. And, and this is uh, this caught my eye as a really interesting uh, talk. So at 6.30 at the Gunn Memorial Library down there in Washington, you, as you say, on Thursday, November the 8th, they've got a guest, James Mustish, who is the um, – he's an author, he's a bookseller, and he is uh, the co-founder of, of a book catalog called the common a common reader um but he's written a book um which looks really absolutely fascinating to uh, hear about at this time of year it's called 1000 books to read before you die um i think it's a bit of a challenge but anyway um the the whole point of it is that readers will never again have to wonder about what to read next it, it just goes through so many books which are compul- compulsively readable or they're entertaining they're full of surprises and the whole thing about this book and it sounds funny to read a book about re- which books to read but in fact it is um, really key in this day of amazon algorithms because those amazon algorithms that recommend what you should be reading next are all well and good but they always depend on what you've read in the past and if you go to a book like this it comes up with really interesting new books that you wouldn't have thought of doing and the algorithms don't find for you so it's a really opportunity it's an opportunity to celebrate the joy of discovery um and the other thing is not only is it uh, will it give you hours of browsing pleasure but it will also uh, help you find books to give as presents over the holiday season so i found that really interesting so uh, it's down there thursday this thursday november the 8th 6:30 at the gun memorial library just a half hour after that uh, 7 p.m. on the 8th, uh, we can head to North Adams, Massachusetts. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to drive fast. But um, I spotted this as well, and th- this is really impressive. So uh, the Mass- Massachusetts College of Liberal Arts um, has the annual Michael S. and Kitty Dukakis Public Policy Lecture. And, and this year, it's being given by Tani- Ta-Nahisi Coates, um, and it's going to be a really crowded event because he is uh, obviously extremely well known. Um, and uh, his, I guess he's really well known for his 2015 book, which was a Between the World and Me. It was a number one New York Times bestseller. And basically it's required or recommended reading at hundreds of colleges and universities across the U.S., um, it was the book actually just to remind people is it was structured as a letter to his teenage son uh, addressing what it means to be um, an African American person in today's America and um, I think it caught the imagination and and really it gave people a bit of an insight into that anyway his new book his newest book is we were eight years in power an American tragedy it's a collection of his writing from the Obama era, um, including a number of never-before-published essays. Recently, he's been involved in a whole series of really very different things. For example, he's been collaborating with the illustrator Brian Stelfreeze to write Marvel's Black Panther graphic models, uh, novel series. Um, in fact, his Black Panther story, A Nation Under Our Feet, was even nominated for a Hugo Award for Best Graphic Story, which seems uh, very different from what he's done in the past. He's also working with an illustrator on the next chapter of Marvel's Captain America. So um, anyway, he's going to be giving this eighth annual Michael and Kitty Dukakis public policy lecture, 
uh, at MCLA on Thursday, November the 8th, um, and it starts at 7 o'clock in the evening. So if you are in, if you like him and you're interested, uh, zip, you're on, uh, zip up to uh, North Adams to check that out. We'll move on to November 11th. This sounds uh, like a lot of fun, actually. Storyhouse Documentary Theater, and well-placed for today. Uh, uh, One-act documentary plays about Love at the Edge of Reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's actually really a local event because it's in Hudson Hall on, uh, in Hudson on um, Friday, and it c- continues through November the 11th, so there are various times. Um, and it, it, these plays are produced in the Story Horse, Horse Documentary Theater, which is run by Mary Stuart Masterson and Jeremy Davidson. And as you say, they've got three new one-act documentary plays. But the thing about these plays is they were inspired by real conversations with Hudson Valley residents. And um, uh, they're all about love at the edge of reason. So it sounds, um, I'm not, uh, sounds pretty typical of the Hudson Valley. No, I'm joking. Don't, uh, don't send us letters. But <laughs> anyway, um, the stories are really brought to life on the stage by professional actors um, in this theatre, which is really getting a lot of traction locally. Um, and uh, what's fun about it is that it's a multimedia-infused concert-style reading uh, that goes on. So um, the, it's, through fr- it's Friday through Sunday, the 9th to the 11th. You'll have to go to the Hudson Hall website for all the times and the details and to make your reservations. But it sounds like it's really going to be interesting as well. After that, let's talk about uh, heading over to Falls Village, Connecticut at 7.30 on the 9th. The Salisbury Forum once again has another event coming up. Yeah, the Salisbury Forum has been doing extremely well of late, uh, been finding some really interesting speakers, and this week is no exception. Um, the They've asked Joshua Ginsberg to come and talk on um, environmental optimism, and I guess the key thing here is that this week has seen another worrying report about climate change and about global warming. Um, but Joshua Ginsburg says that this, not all is lost, that um, there is some, there are some opportunities appearing even uh, in a period of rapid climate change. Now, Joshua Ginsburg is the president of the Kerry Institute of Ecosystem Studies. Um, he's going to be talking about how the lower cost of alternative energy and much more efficient storage systems are really making it increasingly possible for some places to uh, be much greener and also to be off the grid entirely. So it is really interesting talk. It's about the future um, that we're probably going to be facing one way or another. Um, and I thought that, that it was a really good thing that they've managed to get that together at the Housatonic Valley Regional High School on Friday, November the 9th, uh, down there in Falls Village. It starts at 7.30 in the evening. All right. Let's go to Poughkeepsie, New York. And this yeah, we're is, all over the place. <laughs> yeah, the, the 12th annual, I, I hate the title of this, to be honest with you, Wind Chill Dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but uh, it's all for a good cause. It, it really is for a good cause. So the Poughkeepsie Grand Hotel is uh, hosting the River, uh, the Hudson River Housing Company uh, organization, and they are having a dinner and a silent auction to raise funds and awareness um, in support of their programs for the homeless. So uh, it's a really good cause. This year, the keynote speaker is Becca Stevens, who I'd never heard of, but she... Uh, turns out i did some research and it turns out she's an author she's a social justice entrepreneur and the founder and president of thistle farms which is a movement uh, dedicated to supporting women survivors of trafficking and prostitution and addiction as well so it's really multi uh, you know it's, it's very active in a whole series of er- areas and she has been named a white house champion of challenge change She was a 2016 CNN hero. She's been featured a lot in the New York Times, on ABC World News and and NPR as well. So and she has written a book which called Love Heals um, uh, that was published late uh, 2017. Anyway, Hudson River Housing, as always, is looking for new ways to build sustainable livelihoods through new employment opportunities, which allows people to live in their houses 
Um, and they're going to be making some announcements of new opportunities at the dinner as well. So this is an important cause, uh, and it's good to be able to support it. As I say, it's uh, the 12th annual Wind Chill Dinner, and it will be at the Poughkeepsie uh, Grand Hotel on Friday, November the 9th. On November the 10th, Great Barrington and in Lakeville, our good friends at Crescendo are at it again. Yeah, actually, it's a, a November the 10th, and uh, that's the Saturday, and then Sunday, November the 11th. Um, the, it's November the 10th, it's in, they're in Great Barrington, and on November the 11th, they're in Lakeville. And as you say, uh, Crescendo has got a concert. It's called The Sound of the Trumpet. Um, it's also subtitled Celebrating Life in England and New England, so very suitable for us here. Um, it will feature the Crescendo Chorus. The soloists include the countertenor uh, Nicholas Tamagna, and there will be musicians on period instruments performing works from Henry Purcell, Sir John Tavener, and from the international prize-winning Connecticut-born composer Scott Perkins. And they're going to be using poetry uh, by Emily Dickinson and others as well. So on Saturday, it will be at St. James Place in Great Barrington at 6 o'clock in the evening. And on Sunday, it's at Trinity Church in Lakeville at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. From Great Barrington and Lakeville, we'll hit the road again uh, on the 10th. Uh, Annandale on Hudson and uh, Bard College is the location. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is going to be a big, big event. So Bard College um, is hosting Brian Reed, who is the co-creator of S Town. Now, I'm a big uh, podcast listener, um, and I'd be fascinated to attend this event. Uh, I guess it was one of the biggest podcasting groundbreaking events of. 2017 and right through into 2018 as well and brian is going to be discussing how he developed this in almost entirely new form of storytelling so if you listen to his podcast you'll know that they used audio outtakes and then they uh, revealed details cut from the final version of the podcast and they put it all together in a really interesting and very entertaining way, and it was incredibly successful. There were tens of millions of downloads of this podcast, and I think that there will be a lot of people who go to listen to Brian Reed at Bard College, um, and he is, uh, I think, uh, going to be a, a really fascinating to hear, particularly as we're involved in podcasting one way and another, Marshall. So uh, there will be some opportunities to learn some things. Anyway, the Fisher Center is going to be jam-packed for this talk. Um, It's at Bard College at the Fisher Center on Saturday, November the 10th at 7.30 in the evening. Let's go to Pittsfield, Massachusetts on the 10th, the Food for Thought dinner. Yeah, um, this is uh, another event where I better put things in context um, because I want listeners to know that Rural Intelligence is one of the sponsors of the of this event. It's at Hancock Shaker Village, and it's called Food. Uh, it's a Food for Thought dinner, and they've been incredibly successful these dinners over the last couple of years. Um, and basically, just to remind you, what happens is uh, attendees get to enjoy a farm to table dinner. Uh, with a well-known author talking, you get uh, wine and um, a copy of the book included in the price of this whole event. Um, and this week, it's the National Book Award and Pulitzer Prize winner, Andrea Barrett, who is the author of a new story collection called Archangel. Um, Andrea is pretty impressive. She's a MacArthur Award uh, recipient. She will be... Um, she's. Uh, been a well as i say a national book award and pulitzer prize winner as well um she's going to be talking about the history behind the stories how um, we should be thinking about history today um and i think about her personal passions and, and what she thinks shapes um her books one way and another so it will be a lovely evening it starts at six o'clock in the evening at hancock shaker village in pittsfield on saturday november the 10th We'll move uh, from uh, that fundraising gala uh, to uh, another fundraising gala, and that is the annual PS21 fundraising gala. Yep, this one's going to be very different from their previous uh, fundraisers, um, and it's going to be a wonderful celebration because PS21 in Chatham 
uh, had their inaugural season in their new theater this year. And this is their new black box theater that's taken a lot of time and work and, and really effort to get off the ground and has been incredibly successful. They're extending the season um, and it's giving them a whole series of new opportunities uh, now that they've got it built. Um, and the fun, so this fundraising gala is going to be really key. It starts at six o'clock in the evening um, and they're going to have a whole series of performances by what, PS21 audience favorites. So the Bang Group will be back. They're a really amazing percussive dance company. Um, they're going to be demonstrations by student participants of the PS21's West African Drumming Workshop with the Jamal Jackson Dance Company uh, dancing as well. Um, there's going to be a lot. Uh, there'll be drinks and all sorts of hors d'oeuvres. Um, and there'll be going to be tastings from the Old York Farm Distillery. It's going to be a silent auction all sorts of one-of-the-kind uh, items and experiences there at the, on the silent auction. So it's a good event. It's a lovely uh, time to celebrate what PS21 has done this year, and that's on Saturday evening, November the 10th. It starts at 6 o'clock in the evening, actually at their new Black Blocks Theatre in Chatham. Well, we're not done on November 10th by a long shot. As a matter of fact, let's go disturb the peace in old Chatham, New York. Yeah, just up the street. I, this is very different, um, and it's very different from the sort of thing you know we normally talk about. But I spotted it, and we've talked about the Quake. The old Chatham Quakers are quite active, um, and we don't normally talk about the, them in in sort of talks like this. Um, but it's nice to see them, and so I thought I'd sort of give them a bit of a shout out because they're actually showing a film which is called, as you say, "Disturbing the Peace." And it sounds like it's a really interesting film, and it fits with the Quaker philosophy. Um, the film follows former enemy combatants, both Israeli soldiers from elite units as well as Palestinian fighters, many of whom have apparently served years in prison. And these people have joined together to challenge the status quo and say, you know, enough is enough. Uh, we should change the way we're handling these problems. So the film reveals, um, I guess, their the journey, the, both the soldiers and the Palestinian fighters' journey, um, and, uh, and show how they've moved from sort of armed battle to much being nonviolent peace activists for all intents and purposes. So it's it's a really interesting film, very unusual, and fits with. Um, Peace loving and the Quakers, one way and another. So it's it's on Saturday, November the tenth, in Old Chatham at the Old Chatham Quakers at six o'clock in the evening. November the tenth, we continue on in North Adams, the fall of the House of Usher. Yeah, this is a big production. Um, fall of the House of Usher is the uh, working. It's a work in progress stage version of the Ag Edgar Allan Poe masterpiece. It's written and directed by Arthur Yorinks and Jim Simpson. And the interesting thing is that it features the sc a score by Philip Glass. And it was adapted from the House of Usher opera that uh, Philip Glass and Yorinks created in 1988. Um, and trust Mass Mocha to take this project on because it's a big project which needs, you know, a lot of space and uh, imagination. Um, and uh, it's not only um, the story. People will want to go not only for the story, but also because it's got puppets. It's got these wonderful musicians. It's got actors. There, is pro there are projections. It's a sort of true Mass Mocha type of event. It starts at 8 o'clock in the evening up in at Mass Mocha, um, up in North Adams. Um, and uh, I think it will be a pretty wild and amazing event, and particularly the music from by Philip Glass, I think, is pretty tremendous one way and another. So the fall of the House of Usher, check it out on the Mass Mocha website uh, for all the details. Let's go to the barn and have some fun. Uh, once again, in Egremont, Massachusetts, the barn. Yeah, they're doing really well at the barn. And um, on Saturday, they have Mary Lawson coming 
Um, and she is really well known because she's a composer. She's a she plays the uh, guitar. She's a pianist. She, she's writing more. She's singing. Um, she is known because she has released over eleven albums since the nineteen nineties. She uh, people may know because she was the group with Madder Rose and then with Saint Low, the Super K's, um, the Piano Creeps, uh, and, and others as well. So she's been in a number of groups. Um, she's been much more involved in spoken word of late and um, video presentations. She's done a memoir, she has all sorts of different things. And she's going to be at the barn um, at 8 o'clock uh, on Saturday, November 10th in Egremont Village. Spencertown, New York. Now we've moved on to November 11th because we totally filled up the 10th. Yeah, you can say that again. And by the way, Sunday's pretty busy as well with some really interesting things. Yeah. So Spencer Town, the Spencer Town Academy Arts Center is really a tremendous venue. And at one o'clock in the afternoon, they've got a great uh, benefit concert. It's called Kids Need Music. Um, and it's with Maria Zemantuaski, I think is how you pronounce her name. And I do apologize for mispronouncing it, probably. So the full name of this event is La Guitarra Fiesta. Kids Need Music Benefit Concert. It features um, Maria, who is a guitarist, and she's going to be performing both classical and flamenco repertoire. The bottom line on this, the proceeds from this concert are going to be used to purchase musical instruments for the Hudson City School District Music Department. So this is a really lovely concert to go to, but it is, but it's for a really good cause as well. So it's on at Spencertown Academy Arts Center at 1 o'clock on Sunday, November the 11th. Also on the 11th, there's a benefit for the Art School of Columbia County. Yeah, well, earlier this year, the Art School of Columbia County announced that they were going to have a capital campaign so they could have a permanent home. Um, and uh, Verdigree Tea in Hudson, down there on Warren Street, uh, I think it's on third, th- the corner of Third, but somewhere down there, is having a, a whole day event um, where they, if you go along and you purchase anything, 10% of the proceeds of uh, their takings that day will be donated to this capital campaign for the uh, Art School of Columbia County. Um, and by the way, so you can go along and enjoy a cup of tea or a pot of tea or two, uh, of, of, uh, and some scones or some hot chocolate. They have a whole series of things, but they also have a good selection of gifts. So it may be an excuse to go out and get a gift one way and another, maybe a teapot or some linens or some specialty products. Um, the other nice thing is that the Art School of Columbia County will be in the store all day as well. And they're selling some limited edition note card sets. Um, and these will be, um, of course, 100 percent of the proceeds of those will be going to the capital campaign. So this is an opportunity if you're wandering around uh, Hudson on Sunday, the 11th, doing your shopping and checking out what's going on in Hudson. If you pop into Verdigree Tea, you can uh, pick something up and 10 percent of the proceeds will be uh, for a good cause. That uh, starts at 10 o'clock and they open at 10 o'clock in the morning and they close six o'clock in the evening. On the 11th, uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, West Stockbridge, Massachusetts. Yeah, uh, this is a, a change from uh, what we normally talk about when we talk about close encounters with music. We normally talk about the concerts and whatever it is, but in West Stockbridge at the West Stockbridge Historical Society on Sunday the 11th, um, they're actually arranging a, a series which is now, it's called Conversations With. So it's a talk. Um, and this year, the series talks off, uh, kicks off with Carol Clark, who's Professor of Music History and Culture at the University of Toronto. And she's going to be talking about uh, Haydn. And it's called, the talk is called Considering the Legacy of Haydn. Um, and she's going to be talking about the breadth and the greatness of Haydn's oeuvre, as I guess you call it, his sacred, you know, he goes everything from sacred music to comic operas, obviously there's a whole lot of quartets and symphonies, um, uh, and uh, he also was well able to look at the changing social activities and cultural activities, political spheres in which he really was working at the time. So uh, really, it could be a really interesting talk about Haydn, um, who uh, really I don't know an awful lot about, so it's a good excuse to learn something. That's uh, the West 
Stockbridge Historical Society, 3 o'clock in the afternoon on Sunday, November the 11th. And uh, then I guess we can uh, wrap things up in Poughkeepsie. Yeah, yeah. And this is uh, a really fascinating, a complete change from everything else we've talked about this week. Um, I don't know the Locust Grove estate, but it sounds like it's going to be interesting because you get to meet a cheetah ambassador at the Locust Grove estate at two, uh, between 2 o'clock and 6 o'clock in the evening on Sunday, November the 11th. Um, and it sounds sort of really strange, but apparently Brian Badger, who is the director of conservation and outreach for the Cheetah Con- Conservation Fund, uh, which works, I think, very closely with the Columbus Zoo. Anyway, they are going to be bringing an ambassador cheetah um, and going to be giving a talk and uh, demonstration um, uh, about this endangered cat, uh, these cats, and and um, and it's going to be talking about uh, the Cheetah Convers- Cons- Conservation Fund and what it's going to be doing worldwide, really, to help this endangered cat. Um, he is, uh, the, I guess there's, you get an opportunity to really see this cheetah really up, uh, really close. Uh, and, and so I think that will be fascinating in its own right. They are going to have a live and silent auction as well. And they're going to be all sorts of hors d'oeuvres. So, uh, check out the full details. You can get there via rural intelligence. As I say, it's Sunday, November the 11th starts at two o'clock in the afternoon, but it runs for a little while. Um, and, of course, they're serving hors d'oeuvres, and I thought to myself, well, of course, if the cheetah gets out, you're going to have to start to run really fast, or you could end up as one of the hors d'oeuvres yourself uh, but for the cheetah. Now, it sounds like a fun afternoon, Sunday, November the 11th. I think more of a main course. <laughs> for me, it would be anyway. <laughs> All right, that is a look at some of the events going on. You'll find much, much more every day of the week, realintelligence.com. Mark, we'll speak to you next week. Lovely. Thanks very much, Marshall. Speak to you soon.